Masha Korpacheva is a California-based realtor and a member of the National Association of Realtors in Los Angeles. She's an advocate for selling and buying homes with soul and practicing mindfulness in real estate. With master's degrees in spiritual psychology and linguistics, Masha brings all of her skills to work with her clients. An intuit and empath, she has touched many lives with her outstanding ability to see beyond the visible and helping to come to better understanding of issues and their resolutions. An adventurous world traveler, from climbing Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania to exploring the Galapagos Islands, Masha has a particular passion for the City of Angels. Having landed in this paradise and adopted it as her home, she's been sharing old Hollywood stories since 2007. This podcast is an invitation to feel and experience the souls of famous old Hollywood homes and to have an in-depth journey to the areas where they're located through interviews with longtime residents. Either you're a fan of old Hollywood in Los Angeles, planning to have a vacation, or an even bigger step, considering a certain area for your future home. This is your opportunity to receive valuable information and insightful advice you won't find anywhere else. In the mood for California, feel the soul of old Hollywood. Hello, hello, and welcome to my podcast. Are you in the mood for California? Today, we're exploring and feeling Laurel Canyon, together with a remarkable woman, Adrienne Duncan, who is a songwriter, composer, pianist, singer, producer, and arranger. After a glimpse of history, We'll talk about Adrian's experience of living in Laurel Canyon, and we'll find out what this place means to her. And now, are you ready to feel the soul of Laurel Canyon? Jackson Brown once said that Laurel Canyon was a place that gave you the permission to ask who you were to find out what this life held for you and not be scrambling for some regimented job in a regimented society. This woody and mountainous neighborhood in the Hollywood Hills with Laurel Canyon Boulevard, like an artery connecting more urban part of Los Angeles to the north and south in the late 60s and early 70s, provided peace and tranquility to a whole constellation of aspiring musicians. Named after the California Bay Laurel, a native tree growing wild all over the canyon, it is a delicate reminder of the myth about Daphne, who metamorphosed into a laurel tree in her attempt to avoid Apollo's love. And even though Apollo plated for himself a crowning laurel wreath, that Olympic winners will later wear, these laurels of victory are an illusion, as the prize that is most desired will always elude the one who pursues it. The spiritual bond of the residents with the nature of Laurel Canyon remains a myth in and of itself. The Laurel Canyon area was originally inhabited by the Tongva people, with a very reliable water supply provided by a spring-fed stream that flowed year-round. In the late 18th and early 19th centuries, colonial Spanish ranchers started grazing sheep on the hillsides, and in 1850, the area was settled by Americans interested in water rights. Until 1907, when an 82-mile dirt road was built, the passage up the canyon was made on foot or by mule. In 1907, the Lookout Mountain Park and Water Company was formed to purchase 280 acres on Lookout Mountain, just west of Laurel Canyon, subdivided and marketed as mountain vacation properties. In 1910, Charles Mann a real estate developer, and Richard Shoemaker, an electrical engineer, built a trackless trolley line. 
passenger service began on September 11, 1915, on what was the first commercial trolley bus operation in the United States. Mann and his partners bought property along Laurel Canyon Boulevard and up in the hills. Some of the first tracks were developed in the Lookout Mountain Bowl with Bungalow Land and Wonderland Park, both of which were moderately priced with narrow lots and a network of interconnecting lanes and footpaths. This legacy of narrow streets is the reason why there is parking and emergency access issues nowadays. By the 1960s, Laurel Canyon had become a local center for counterculture and a thriving music scene for country rock, folk rock, with a myriad of singer-songwriters calling it their home, from various members of The Birds, The Doors, Love and Buffalo, Springfield, to Frank Zappa, The Mamas and the Papas, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, and Johnny Mitchell. For almost a decade, Laurel Canyon was the focus of a very productive and innovative creative community, hosting a second wave of artists, Linda Ronstadt, Little Feet, Jackson Brown, and the Eagles. Very inexpensive and therefore affordable, conveniently located, and at the same time secluded, with inspiring hilltop views you could see from large windowed timber houses where you would get by taking dirt roads, brushing off the urban dust and embracing the flamboyant greenery fragrant with eucalyptus. With newly restored peace, this area turned into a mecca for songwriting. Owl, coyote and acoustic guitar sounds would vibrate in the cool night air of the canyon creating a most collaborative harmony. Standing apart from conformity and convention, the residents led a free-spirited life, growing their hair long, smoking a lot of weed, and changing relationships frequently. This countercultural identity of this place was palpable and could be equaled to some sort of awakening. But it did not last long. As people were becoming more and more successful and wealthy, they started looking for bigger homes in more affluent neighborhoods. Suddenly, this bubble of creativity, friendship, sex and drugs burst open and fell apart. The effects of success can be pretty corrosive, just like the laurel wreath serves as a symbol of triumph and at the same time remains a metaphor for a continuous effort. Life has its peaks, valleys, and sometimes it has Laurel Canyon. And it's all about the journey that we take and what we make out of it, as the destination is irrelevant and might as well be an illusion. And here we are. Welcome to Laurel Canyon. I'm so happy to have Adrian Duncan here with me. Adrian is a songwriter, composer, pianist, singer, producer, and arranger. She has been making music since the age of six, the daughter of a renowned classical guitarist, Charles Duncan. She has performed and recorded in the United States and internationally with some of Los Angeles' most noted musicians, including the Grammy-nominated Lado B, Brazilian project. Her latest release, Gemini, features her original compositions and arrangements, and her voice and piano playing can be heard in such films as God's Country, Sanctuary, The Young Kislovsky, and The Chameleon. Please, Follow her on Instagram at Adrian Duncan and check out her website, adrianduncan.com. 2021 album Gemini is available on Bandcamp, Spotify, and all streaming platforms. 
She feels so lucky to be able to live in LA's beautiful Laurel Canyon with its rich music history, eclectic architecture, and access to nature. She will share with us her feeling of this unique area today. Hello, Adrian. Hi, Masha. I'm so very happy to have you here with me. Thank you for having me. Yes. Yes, of course. And uh, I just cannot wait is, you know, for us to talk about Laurel Canyon, one of the most famous neighborhoods in Los Angeles, known for its unconventional and non-conforming vibe. That's right. So you live in Laurel Canyon and it's so special. So why did you choose this place? Well, you know, it was interesting when I when I first moved here, I was living relatively close. I moved with a friend um, from New York. So we were actually living in an apartment building on the corner of um, Franklin and La Brea. So it's not far. Mm -hmm. So one day I just sort of randomly wandered in here driving and I was blown away because I moved here from Chicago and I had thought that I was going to be more of a beach person. Not at all. I I am a East Sider. I like the canyons. <laughs> I like the mountains. So I was so floored. There's something so magical about a lot of the canyons, but I think Laurel Canyon in particular, and just the way the architecture is so eclectic and you have such a mix of styles and the little narrow windy streets. And it's just, I mean, there's wildlife. It almost feels rural here. So I was just so blown away. And then my friend that I um, was living with actually bought a house in Laurel Canyon. Mm -hmm. And so I lived there with her for a couple of years and then she got married. And then I was, you know, I was really wanted to stay in the area. So then I found uh, the place that I'm currently in. Yes, yes. And what does it actually feel for you uh, to live in Laurel Canyon? I mean, because I'm somebody that really has to be outside a lot. I can't be, it's hard for me to feel um, confined. So, you know, I mean, I've lived here for a long time and I will never get sick of looking out my windows. I mean, I look out my windows and I'm like, oh, there's my tree that I love, you know, and I have a little outdoor area that I go and I sit and I have my coffee and I read, you know, and I can see hawks. And then sometimes there's deer family wandering around. And sometimes in the, you know, at night you can hear coyotes howling, which is very eerie, but I love that they're there. So there's just a real sense of being I don't know, like almost suspended here. Like you're not quite in LA, but if I want to be in LA, I can be in Hollywood in five minutes. So that's what's so fantastic about it. And I also, um, I hike a lot. I hike pretty much every day. And a lot of what I do is street hiking. Mm -hmm. But again, I feel so lucky. I can just walk on my door. I don't have to pay for a gym membership. <laughs> it's really hilly. And I can just walk out my door and be just in these amazing hills, get a great workout. Again, the architecture is just really spectacular, the views. So I just, honestly, I never get sick of it. I don't, never. There's just a real sense of um, magic here and history here that I really, really relate to. And I just feel really lucky to be here. Yes, I, I can see that. And I can see how conducive uh, living in Bolo Canyon is to your lifestyle. You know, it is true that living there, you're almost like, you know, being in a village, you know, in some rural area. And then you're literally five minutes away from like the middle of like where everything is happening. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's so, an incredible feeling. Oh, it's wonderful. I mean, because I'm in, you know, I'm on the Hollywood side. So, you know, to get into Hollywood is very quick for me. Studio City is also super quick and getting to Ventura Boulevard. You know, Laurel Canyon Boulevard itself, I had heard the statistic, I don't know if this is true, but I had heard that it's the most heavily traveled uh, residential street in the country. <laughs> <laughs> so that may or may not be true, but um, there's obviously thousands and thousands of cars that use it every day. Um, so sometimes it can get a little, you know, traffic heat going over the hill, but you just know those hours and you just kind of avoid it. And frankly, I don't really mind because I can look at the architecture. 
<laughs> so it never really bothers me when I get stuck. <laughs> right, right. So yes, it, it satisfies your aesthetics as well, because it is important um, to visually like where you live. It really is. And I feel, again, I feel super lucky to have had the opportunity, you know, to have this place because I am a very aesthetic person and I do, it, it would, it's really important to me where I live how it's decorated. I need to have my stuff around me. And this is not, you know, a monetary thing. It's just, I want to look at stuff that, you know, is special to me and be in an environment where, again, I feel connected to nature. I feel connected to the past. It's interesting. It's not cookie cutter, you know, so Laurel Canyon really, really does that for me. Right, right. Well, and here's my next question. What does your home mean to you? Well, I mean, you know, it's so funny because my, my home is, you know, it's small. It's, it's, um, it's an apartment. I'm in the bottom unit of a duplex, but you know, I, again, it doesn't feel small to me. Um, it's very spacious. I think I'm a little bit house proud, which is kind of funny for, you know, a renter, but I'm really close with my landlords and, um, I have it set up exactly how I want it. And it has, it has high ceilings, which are important to me. And then windows all the way around. And like I said, I have outdoor space. So I just feel like I have this giant backyard. So, and sometimes I really like to nest, you know, so I love being in my place with all my stuff and my, and my artwork. Um, I have art on the walls. This is something I'm very happy about. Almost all the art that I have put up, probably I'd say half, was either given to me by somebody special or made by somebody special. I know the artist. So that's actually, again, a big deal to me. And um, I never get sick of, of of looking at it. So I need to have a lot of stuff that I can look at. Right. Um, and I'm a musician too. So being kind of holed up in here and practicing and be able to look out the window you know, and see the trees and the hawks and the deer. That's that's very important to me. And I love having people over. And I'm always so happy. I mean, people walk in. I just had a friend over the other day who had never been here and was just like, oh, your place, you know. So I just love it when people have that um, that reaction. I really do. Oh, beautiful. That's beautiful. And then you told me that uh, your home has a very special history. Would you mind sharing it with us? Yes. I think you're talking about the um, somewhat uh, scandalous history from the Yes. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Well, so so I looked this up several years ago because I just, um, I was Googling my address for something else. So basically, okay, tiny bit of backstory about the property. So Laurel Canyon used to be um, uh, deer hunting. And so nobody really lived here. So I live in a renovated deer hunting cabin that was built in 1920. And there's three buildings that were all sort of connected. They must have been built by the same builder or architect. And then my landlord is really kind of a canyon preservationist. So he lovingly restored them. Um, And it took him about five years, I think, to do it. So anyway, so he kind of reconfigured some of the, some of the units. There's a a freestanding cottage that I that I know he completely reconfigured. Um, but again, they've been around, they've been here for a long time. And um, so when I was Googling the address, just <laughs> out of the blue, I saw something, it was a link to, you know, a drug bust in like 1957. And I was like, what? And so I went on it and there's an archival um, section of the USC website that had these four photographs and they look like movie stills. And I was just like, not only is this my house, because, you know, there's two units here. It's my unit. Wow. So I was like, that's my closet. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a there's like a DEA agent or I don't know if he could be from the L.A. police. I don't know if it was federal, but he's in my closet. And so they took out something like 160 pounds of pot from this oh apartment. My God. And there's three guys and I read about them and two of them were brothers. And then they, I guess they had a friend and they were all in their early thirties and yeah, they were sort of notorious. One of the brothers I think is actually still alive. I think he's almost a hundred, but, um, and you know, it was funny when I was, um, 
Because, you know, and then then they, there's another picture where it shows them walking out. And I was like, that's my steps. I go through <laughs> those steps every day. So it's just, it, it's funny. I know I, I'm sort of glamorizing it, but the photographs are, you know, they're pretty glamorous. They are. And, um, and then when I was looking, when I was sending you the pictures, I actually zoomed in. I never noticed this before. I zoomed in on the one of the guy in my closet, because I was just like, I wanted to see what they had in the closet. And then I noticed, cause he's looking in a trunk mm-hmm. and there there's a book in there and it was a book about music history. <gasps> and I was like, Oh, that's really cool. Like, I guess these guys, I don't know if they were just like hippies or, you know, sensitive drug dealers. I don't know what they were, but, um, but I was like, Oh, how funny. There's a book about music history in this trunk that's being searched for drugs. So yeah, the whole thing, the whole thing is pretty, pretty interesting, but yeah. So this was, I I don't know if they lived here or if they were just, you know, doing business here, (laughs) but, but um, yeah. Yeah. So that was, uh, yeah, there was a drug bust here. (laughs) Oh my God. That's crazy. So how long have you lived uh, at your place? I have lived here for a long time about uh how many years have I lived here probably about 12 and um so yeah it's uh I mean I know the area so well and like I said I lived I lived in Laurel Canyon before too I lived about mm, I mean I could walk there so maybe like the equivalent of you know three blocks away right Um, right. it's the same pretty much yeah it's exactly the same during this 12 years that you lived uh, at your place and, you know, then you discovered that uh, there was like, a, um, there were drug dealers busted uh, specifically at your unit. So how did that change for you? Like, you did, did you feel differently about your place? Oh yeah. Even better. Even more excited. <laughs> how awesome is that? <laughs> oh my God. I was, my place is even cooler than I thought it was. <laughs> Right, right. And did you speak to your landlord? Did he know that uh, drug dealers were busted? Oh, yeah, I sent him the pictures. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I mean, we just all thought it was hilarious. I mean, this is obviously way before his time, way before he owned it. I think he bought it. I don't even know when he bought it. I think he must have bought it like in the 90s, like late 90s. Maybe he bought it. I don't know exactly when. I don't know how long he had it. But the drug bust, yeah, had had it was it was before his uh, his ownership but um yeah it's just uh part of it is the photographs because honestly whoever took the photographs i don't know if they were like a hollywood photographer but the photographs are are beautiful they're really beautifully composed and very evocative so it just it always just gives me a really special feeling to to think about who lived here before you know and i actually had um I had a student, you know, cause I, I teach out of, out of my, uh, out of my place. And I had a student at one point for a while, she was so fascinating. She was, um, uh, Japanese and she had moved here with her husband in the seventies and she was not happy in LA. She didn't like it. Um, they were living somewhere down in the flats, like maybe around Wilshire. And then one day, kind of like me, she randomly was driving around, randomly drove into Laurel Canyon. And all of a sudden she felt at home. She said it reminded her of this area um, that was close to where she lived in Japan. That's a little bit more mountainous, I guess. Mm-hmm. And so they moved here in the seventies, but she left. This is another sort of uh, notorious uh, thing. She lived one house away, not next door. Because when I found out that when she had lived here, I was like, oh, the lesson is over. You just need to talk to me. Today's free. Just talk to me. But she, <laughs> um, she um, lived one house away from, I don't know if you know about the John Holmes murders in the, yes. I guess it was in the late seventies. Yeah. She was one, she was home when it happened. And she said that she, there's a wonderful store down the street uh, called the Canyon Country Store that is memorialized in a Doors song. And she said she used to see Jim Morrison at the Canyon Country Store. I was just like, that is amazing. Amazing. She also said that it was a dirt road. It wasn't like fully paved. And there was no, there wasn't even a a stoplight. That's right. There wasn't even a stop sign on Laurel Canyon. So that's how like out of the way it was then in the 70s. Now a lot of people discovered it and it got more, you know, built up, but, um, but you still have that feeling though. There's still the majority of the, of the architecture here is still of the, of the era. 
you know, like I said, my place is, was built in 1920. So there's a lot of places like that still. So you still have that vibe of being connected to the past, which I, I really like. Oh, that's beautiful. And also probably for you being a musician and also teaching uh, from your place, it must make you feel connected to all those absolutely amazing musicians who used to live and create in that area. Oh, 100%. I mean, I'm a Joni Mitchell fanatic and she lived here. She lived with um, Graham Nash, you know, the song, Our oh, wait, is it Our House? Yeah, that's, yeah, the Crosby, Stills and Nash song. I believe that's about where they lived in Laurel Canyon. And then the Mamas and the Papas were here. And, you know, um, uh, so many different, amazing uh, Jackson Brown, so many amazing writers and creators in the 70s. Because, again, the reason why was because it was um, it was cheap and they had yes. big houses. It was cheap and they could spread out and they could do music and, you know, play until three in the morning and 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 nobody cared. So, yeah, it is neat to feel that you know, that, that history here really is musically, especially for me. Yes. Yes. The wonderful, like, and I can see how you also feel, you know, being part of this history and continuing, you know, to kind of like bring it forward uh, to people that you work with. That's, that's such a wonderful thing. I mean, I hope so. <laughs> if I'm ever considered part of Laurel Canyon music history, I'll be very excited. <laughs> <laughs> you are, and you're an incredible pianist. And Thank of course you. you are, absolutely. Absolutely. So Adrian, uh, tell us um, a little bit uh, about uh, your favorite places nearby. Oh, well, that's easy. I have <laughs> So um, Yes. So the Canyon Country Store, like I said, that is very special. And, you know, that I think may be one of the oldest continuously operating stores in, in LA, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think it has been there, if I'm not mistaken, since about, oh, I'm guessing like 1908. So they have a lot of, you know, photography there um, of, you know, past images and the way the store used to look. The thing that's so cool about the store is they they don't really have set closing times, but um but there's a, there's, well, there's a restaurant underneath it, which is also an amazing restaurant, Pache, which I love. One of my favorite restaurants in, in town. And I was there with um, a girlfriend of mine and, and her two cousins. And my friend is Brazilian and her cousins were from Brazil. So we had a wonderful dinner there. Then I would, then I needed something. And I was like, oh, let's go upstairs to the store. And it was like 1130 at night. And they were like, what are you talking about? And I was like, oh, no, there's a store right upstairs. It's going to be open. And we went in and they were so floored because they had never seen anything like it. Just this random right. place. And you know the owner and you walk in and it's open and you get this, I think I needed like super glue. And so I walked <laughs> in and I got super glue at 1130 at night. So I just love stuff like that. That's just so quirky. And so those two places are really special and I can walk there. And then um, last night I ate with a friend of mine um, at one of my favorite places in LA, which is a little bit farther from here, but I mean, maybe 10 minute drive, which is mm -hmm. um, the little door, which is oh, on third. Oh, I love the little door. I love it. So we went there and then um, going over the hill over onto the, the Studio City side, um, there's a little street. I always forget the name of the street, so I don't want to <laughs> misdirect anybody. So Ventura Boulevard is the main one. Mm -hmm. So this one, I think is called, I think it's called Ventura Place. So it's just like a little tiny, maybe like two block street that's parallel to Ventura Boulevard, right at Laurel Canyon. But on Sundays, they block it off. They have a farmer's market. Um, there's a Jones on 3rd outpost there. So I have a little joke with a friend of mine because there are two Jones on 3rd and we sometimes meet at either one. Mm -hmm. So we'll be like, let's meet at Jones on 3rd. And she's like, Jones on 3rd or Jones on 3rd, not on 3rd. And I'm like, <laughs> not on 3rd. <laughs> and then she knows the one that I'm talking about. So, um, so that one, Jones on third, not on third is fantastic. <laughs> and there's everything over there is just so great and you can wander and there's a great little restaurant there called the tuning fork. And, um, it's just cute. Again, it's, it's, that's a little bit more urban feeling a little bit more retail, but that particular street is, is a little bit more off the beaten track. So I, I really like it and it's mixed in with, with residential stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, 
I love, I love all of it. I mean, I, I definitely, uh, I never thought I would say that I was a Valley girl, but I kind of am. I like the Valley. I like Studio City. <laughs> it's just very convenient, you know, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of good stuff there. People give it a bad rap, but I like it. Yes. It, it also probably feels uh, like more rural and uh, you're like a part of nature because you did mention how much you like hiking and how much you love nature. And probably that's also the reason uh, why you like uh, these areas so much. Oh, 100%. There's so many different canyon walks that you can do. And even when I do um, street, well, I call it, because I always say I'm going hiking and then people realize that I'm walking on the street. But right. the thing is up in Mount Olympus, which is where I, I walk a lot. Oh, so, so that's, I was so going to ask you where you like to go hiking. So oh, Mount like... Olympus. It's okay. so steep. It's really steep. So it's street hiking. I'm not on a trail, but it's it's a really good workout. And again, I love, I mean, so I like both. I like being in an area where I can look at all the res- the architecture, but I also like being, you know, on a trail and just being, you know, with nature. So Fryman Canyon is really close. That's a great place to go hiking. Tree people is great. So um, yeah, I just like being outside. If I don't get outside at least once a day, I'm I'm not, I'm not a happy camper. I don't like okay. it. I hear you. I hear you. Well, it sounds like uh, you are living your dream life. You know, you live in a quaint place, which is also very historical, and drug dealers were busted there. I love and those then, drug dealers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have your favorite tree, and, you know, you have your favorite Canyon Country Mart that uh, that is open till, like, super late hours, and your favorite restaurants nearby. And at the same time, this area is like a whole gym for you where you can go hiking and exercising. So it is a dream life. It's, you know, it's not bad for a freelance musician in L.A. It's uh, I'm not going to lie. It's it's pretty good. It's a it's a it's a safe neighborhood. It's an artistic neighborhood. Um, You know, I felt so fortunate, you know, during the um, during lockdown to be here because you know i i was able to to be outside so much you know and i yeah. could go hiking and walking and it was you know everything was relatively you know empty so lockdown for me was i think a different experience than it than it might have been for for other people and i felt so fortunate you know if i had been like in a in an apartment building on a higher floor or something like that i think i would have felt a little bit more claustrophobic but the right. was for me, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was not so bad. Yes, yes. Well, and thank you so much uh, for um, agreeing to have uh, our conversation about Laurel Canyon today. And it was such a pleasure um, to speak to you. And at the same time, I'm also so, so um, happy for you that you found your special place in this big city and that you feel content and that you feel free to create. And um, and I'm so happy to have you as my friend as well. Masha, you are the best. Anything for you. You're such a good person. <laughs> this is great. This is great. And I love how passionate you are about architecture and history. And I feel like you have such an amazing sense of, you know, a home is not just a building. It's something that you infuse with yourself and the people that were there before leave a little part of themselves there too. And you can, you can feel it. I mean, buildings are, you know, alive to a certain extent. Yes. And, yes. You they know, have souls. Yes. They really do. They really do. And if you are a person that happens to be particularly connected to that, it's really important where you live. And so to have somebody like you sort of guide the process, you know, that does feel that, I think is uh, really special and really important. And you have, obviously, I love reading everything you write about it. You have such a strong sensibility, you know. Oh, thank you, Adrian. I'm very touched. Thank you. Yes. (laughs) Thank you so much. And thank you very much for our conversation. And I'll see you soon. Yes, that's great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Of course. Bye. I hope you enjoyed experiencing Laurel Canyon and getting a feel of it through the eyes of long-term resident Adrian Duncan. 
Please press the like button, subscribe, and share your feedback for the podcast. Your time and support are greatly appreciated. Next Friday, we are traveling to Sonoma and will experience the home where the author of The Valley of the Moon used to live. See you there! In the mood for California, feel the soul of old Hollywood.